Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Love Rising Lutheran Church. Whether you are joining us here in person in our sanctuary, we thank you for coming today to worship with us. Or whether you are joining us through our online church, through our live stream on YouTube, we welcome you to God's family here at Love Rising Lutheran Church. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen church. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus the Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. We are still celebrating the season of Easter church. And so we praise the Lord today and we are looking forward to seeing what kind of surprises, oh Lord, that God has for us today as we worship as we lift up the name of Christ Jesus in this community of faith. And so, if y'all are ready to worship, are you ready to worship? Ready, ready, ready. I said, are you ready to worship? Are you ready to praise the name of God? Well, if you are, we should I say ready or not. Ready or not. Ready or not. We want to thank God for the voices of love rising and our incredible, our wonderful, our marvelous minister of music, Reverend Dr. Valerie McKim. So as we worship today, if you want to dance in the aisles, please do so. If you want to lift your hands up in praise, please do so. Lift your voices in song. Do that as well. Do whatever it is that you need to do to let God know. God is the Alpha and the Omega, the one who we lift up in praise because God sent his only begotten baby boy, Christ Jesus, to die on the hill called Calvary, that we might have abundant life. Amen. So let's lift up the name of Jesus.
help us. Amen. In these seasons. And so we choose this, this morning, whenever you're watching this broadcast, we choose to give God praise. Yes. Yes. We choose to join in with the heavens and sing hallelujah, Lord, your word. And we love you.
I will be reading from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. How great is the love of the Father. Yes. How great, excuse me, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and that we that will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawless, lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. Hallelujah. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. Here ends the reading. chapter, I'm going to read verses 36 to 48. That's Luke 24, verses 36 to 38. And I'm going to start with the B, B part of, of uh, verse 36. If you're there, say amen. All right, church, if you're still searching, say, hold on. Amen, church. God's word reads for us this morning, reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Holy Writ. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? 
and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were dis disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat, O oh Lord? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written yes. that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead and on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses. Of, you are witnesses of these things. Turn to somebody and say you're a witness. Turn to somebody else and say you're a witness. Look in the mirror, look in the mirror and say I, I am a witness to the glory of God. Christ Jesus. Please be seated, church. Amen. Again, we keep getting these powerful pieces <laughs> on our biblical treasure hunt. Amen. Yes. Amen. Um, I want to kick it with you for a few minutes, church, on the subject sifting through ashes. Sifting sifting y'all through ashes let us pray gracious life giving God we thank you Lord for the incredible gift of your son Christ Jesus the one who got up on the third day Lord and moved the stone out of the way so that the tomb would be empty and helping us to move the stones that inhibit us, Lord, from finding you, from being close to you, Lord, to understanding more about what you are calling us to do, Lord. And so, Lord, help us to check our issues at the door, Lord, that we might center you in this moment. That we might be able to hear you, Lord, as you call to us. That we might have the courage to step into everything that you were calling us to do. And we pray these in all mercies in the name of your, of your Son and our Savior, Christ Jesus. Let the children of the living God say amen. Amen, church. Amen. 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 We are still in this post-resurrection glow. Amen. Uh, these appearance stories. Last week we were in the Gospel of John. This week we are in the gospel of Dr. Luke. And again, Jesus says, touch me, amen. Touch my wounds. Touch me. T 
touch me, it's me. <laughs> it's me. Y'all remember the poet, Nikki Giovanni, who is still with us, who is still alive. Um, I think she's 80 years old now. Um, I remember when I was a, a, a young lad in college, some, oh Lord, <laughs> 40 plus years ago, um, Nikki Giovanni came to my college, which was Adrian College, and spoke to us. Um, I was like, wow, <laughs> in awe. Then, as a young man, and I am still in awe of this incredible poet. Amen, bless you. Poet and revolutionary and activist and leader by the name of Jiki, Nikki Giovanni. And she said these incredible words um, at, for an occasion of a funeral, actually. She said, it's not unusual it's not unusual, church, to sift through ashes and find an unburnt picture. <laughs> Sifting through ashes, church. Sifting through ashes is an endeavor of hope that even, I, I don't know of anybody, how many in the house have experienced a house fire with, or, or the whole notion of losing everything that you have in ashes. Or even just talking about the ashes of our lives. Amen? Um, looking back at the remains and sifting through them is an action of hope, <laughs> of hope, church, that even in the midst of tragedy, y'all, that there is an opportunity for life. These appearance stories that we are going through um, in this post-resurrection milieu, if you will, beloved of God, are stories of grief, y'all. The disciples are grieving. Not only, I mean, they have the double misery of not only of losing their leader and companion and loved one, Christ Jesus. And we've all going through grief in terms of losing people that mean much to us. I know there are those today who are grieving and um, ministers praying for them this morning. And it's amazing that uh, <laughs> the sermon is about grief. <laughs> Look at God. Look at God. But these appearance stories are stories that are about grief. And the disciples have this double trouble of not only losing their friend and leader, but they have also lost their hope in the mission that the leader came to fulfill. Oh Lord. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's incredible, y'all. I mean, we may have lost Martin Luther King, but we didn't lose the vision. Uh, we, it was a bump in the road, amen, to be sure. It was a time of grief in the civil rights movement, but we still know, knew we had Jesus. We still knew that Martin pointed to Jesus, 
but he wasn't Jesus. Amen? And that's all I am this morning is a divine pointer. Amen? <laughs> and when I go down, somebody else will stand up and keep leading the way. Pick up the baton and keep marching. But we sift through the ashes this morning, church. In our community, we are professionals <laughs> at sifting through ashes, church. We have gone through incredible grief in our community, church. We have gone through the grief of the middle passage of being snatched from our home of Mother Africa to land in this so-called land of the free and home of the brave church. We have gone through the grief church of slavery and bondage in this country, Lord that was built on a proposition of freedom for all. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And yet the men who wrote those words, matter of fact, let's call out the particular man, Thomas Jefferson, <laughs> has owned owned in his lifetime over 600 slaves it was a pedophile if we i mean sally hemming was a baby <coughs> sally uh, and, and sally and thomas jefferson had children together as a matter of fact it was sally hemming not thomas jefferson's wife who had sons by Thomas Jefferson. The incredible history that we have been urged not to talk about in this country. Matter of fact, telling the truth about our upbringing is an act of defiance, church. It's an act of defiance to tell the true story about our history. And, and yet, in doing so, we liberate everybody. Yeah. You can't heal till you pull the scab off the wound, church. Yeah. You can't heal until you do a little bleeding first. Amen? Yeah. Our community has never had the opportunity to grieve together and heal together white folk, black folk, red folks, green folks, church. We have never been able to grieve because we've never been allowed to speak truth to power. We have had moments of people, like I'm carving out a space right now, we have had people who have stood up, but our country has not believed in the communal act of telling the truth. It's always been an act of defiance to tell the truth in this country when doing so would liberate us or at least bring, begin the process of liberation. And so we have, we have sifted through ashes as a community of faith. We have come through the Middle Passage. We have gone through slavery. We have come through uh, Jim Crow, Civil Rights era, and Rosa Parks and Martin King and Malcolm X and John F. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy and all those who dared to speak truth to power <laughs> were taken down. And yet, <laughs> somebody say, and yet. and yet. 
And yet, we sift through the ashes. <laughs> we sift through the ashes, church, in hope of finding something that will encourage us to take another step. Thank you, God. <laughs> For those who sift through ashes. One of the incredible verses in this text that I just read this morning is verse 41. Well, I mean, it's all incredible. <laughs> but, I mean, Jesus showing up. I like the way that we began in Jesus himself, the text says, stood among them and said to them, peace be with you while they're sifting. Amen. <laughs> While they're sifting, why do you doubt, Jesus asks. Peace be with you. John, John's Jesus said the same thing last week, y'all, as they were hiding in a room, y'all, with the doors locked. Y'all remember that last week when we were telling John's version of the gospel and the men had decided not to listen to the testimony of Mary Magdalene who said, Jesus is risen. Yeah. Oh, Lord. They decided to hide in their own community. <laughs> oh. And so Jesus is, or I should say Luke's Jesus does the same thing rolls up on the disciples and says, peace be with you. Now this is, this is after we didn't read the walk to Emmaus this year in the lectionary. They did not have the story. I struggled with it. I said, I, I might go on and pull that out anyway, but, but I decided to follow, amen, the lectionary and just refer to it. But Jesus challenges them on their doubts. And Jesus says, Jesus goes right to the heart of the matter. Jesus says that your doubts are in your heart. Which, if y'all remember those you biblical scholars that Jesus challenged the same, challenged them on the road to Emmaus as well, that they were saying to Jesus, because of course in the story, in the appearance story of the walk to Emmaus, they don't even recognize Jesus. Jesus is able to keep his identity away from them. So they call him a stranger who doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> you mean you ain't heard what's happened? That's why we're grieving. Because this Jesus was supposed to be the one. You don't know that? And Jesus is looking at him. <laughs> like, oh my, y'all. Y'all doubt in your hearts. Which is another way that Jesus stands up to fulfill what the scriptures have said that Jesus is a prophet in that instance, that Jesus says, you, this ain't no surface doubt that y'all got. I mean, this goes to your core in your heart. Yes. You doubt. You don't have faith, y'all. And so Jesus begins in this episode to say, here I am. Just as I said I would be, um, I'm not a ghost, <laughs> y'all. Quit trying to make me a ghost. I'm resurrected. But in verse 41, we have a peculiar verse. It says, while in their joy, somebody say joy. joy. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, my Lord. I mean, that, 
almost sounds like an oxymoron, y'all. How can you both be in joy and be disbelieving at the same time? I mean, something ain't right with that verse, y'all. And y'all, the, the casual reader would fly by that verse. And I'm, I'm reading that in my brain twisted on that verse. What a, wait, wait a minute, Lord. Holy Spirit, I need your help right here. I can't see what you're trying to do. Has that ever happened to you in the midst of reading God's word? Happens all the time, church. While in their joy, y'all, joy, we done talked about joy before. I mean, that's one of them fruit of the spirit, y'all. One of, one of them things that, that, that uh, the Lord has put in us through the Holy Spirit that grows in us that helps us what? Be more like who? Jesus. Amen. I'm glad y'all still remember that. <laughs> Amen. Joy, y'all. I mean, not to be confused with happiness. Happiness is that surface thing that we get from the things we have instead of who has you. Joy comes from the notion of understanding who has you in the midst of your grief, in the midst of your loss. I may not have that person anymore with me, but I know where they are. Amen. Amen. And not, not only do I know where they are, in the midst of my pain, I know who has me in this midnight hour of my trouble. I know who has me. Thank you, God. And so that's how I can still be disbelieving and still wondering, but still, somebody say still, still. got joy in my heart. Yeah. Only through the Holy Spirit can we experience that church. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you, God. Wow, in their joy, somebody. We were disbelieving and still wondering. I think last week in the John text, uh, Jesus said that doubting Thomas, the so-called doubting Thomas, you believe because you see, but bless those who come to believe, who don't see, who didn't see, who didn't touch my wounds. But still, somebody say still, still, still have come to believe, my Lord. And so the church is looking for all kind of doubters. <laughs> uh, Jesus, I mean, we, we, we put all the doubt on Thomas, y'all, but we, Jesus still talking about doubters, and Thomas ain't nowhere in this text. <laughs> I mean, we... I, I think maybe doubting Thomas is just symbolic of all of us, y'all, who experience doubt from time to time. And, 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 he, and this gospel preacher is going to say that he stands in that number as well. That in the midst of storms in life, we do go through doubt. And while we are in the midst of our disbelieving and still wondering, we still can have joy. Ouch. Somebody, y'all gonna hear that one on your way on the car home. And you, gonna, you know what he said. <laughs> And then you're going to start shouting and then pull over to the side because I don't want y'all to have an accident on my behalf because that might be one of them delayed shouts. Y'all will be shouting at home later on. I'll let y'all get away with that one today. Amen? Um, but, but, but I got two pieces I got I to gotta hit before I sit down and get out y'all way this morning. Two 
two things that are incredible. Is that this text is, and these appearance stories in general, are not just about the grief of the disciples. Matter of fact, that might even be a secondary piece uh, or third dairy. Amen. <laughs> As we're going to invent some words this morning. <laughs> um, but the issue is that Jesus in the resurrection, y'all, is the fulfillment of everything that the Bible is pointing to. That's what this text is. Jesus said in, in verse 44, y'all, I'm in the text, it says, then he said to them, these are my words. Jesus in the pulpit, now Jesus is preaching, amen. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. Even though Jesus is with them now, but Jesus in his resurrected state said, these are the words that I have spoken while to you while I was with you, that everything, somebody say everything. Everything. Everything written about me in the law of Moses. Now, I mean, the law of Moses is the first five books of the Bible, y'all. And the 613 laws that the Jews created from the Ten Commandments. Amen. Um, uh, and, and all of that, and then some, actually. And then the prophets. Y'all know the prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, and then the book of the 12, as we call them, the minor prophets that come up. All of the prophecy, y'all. And then the Psalms, of which 70-something of the 150 Psalms were written by King who? David, amen? All of the Psalms, all of these major scriptural pieces, Jesus is, is saying, I am the key to you understanding all that y'all struggling with in reading the scripture. Jesus is the, is the lexicon, is the, is the interpretive key. If, if, if we was in uh, the seminary, we'd say the hermeneutical link. I mean, when we're talking about biblical hermeneutics, we're talking about the art or the science of interpreting the Bible, which I've taught y'all that all of y'all are theologians, not just them folks with PhDs and, and MDivs after their names, all of you who try to make sense of what God is saying to you have now put on a hat called theologian. Anytime you think about your faith, you are a theologian. Amen? We're going to have to get some t-shirts. I'm a theologian. <laughs> And wear them in the community because, and then somebody can come and ask you, what does that mean? And now you going to be talking and preaching the faith, y'all. Preachers aren't the only preachers. God is calling all of you. Somebody say everybody. 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 Turn to somebody and say you're a pastor. You're a pastor. Everybody has, has been given who believes in Jesus and the promises of our Lord. You are also called to interpret God's word for those who don't know. And preaching is one way to do that. Matter of fact, there are better ways. And I, I like the main way, which is by walking, not talking. There's a whole lot of folk that do a whole lot of talking about nothing. <laughs> and they got all kind of people following them. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. Look at our former president lying and admitting that he lies. He's the witness against all that he's being accused. There ain't no witness greater than him. He said that he'd do it, he did it, and they still won't put him in jail. All you got to do is be black and walk down the street and just look cockeyed and they put handcuffs on you. <laughs> You just got to look crazy and you getting locked up. He's telling you he's lying and he got half the country following him and half of them say they Christians. Matter of fact, he said he don't have to ask for forgiveness because he ain't did nothing wrong. That tells you right there he ain't never opened the Bible that he carried. Romans 3.23 says what? All somebody have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Whether you white, black, red, yellow, gay, straight, uh, live on the east side or the west side, drive a Honda or a Ford or GM, you are sinful and need a savior. And Jesus said, I am it. I am the fulfillment of all that they wrote in the laws of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. I'm the biblical hermeneutical key and link to help you interpret what you say you don't know. Even though I'm standing here right in your face. And don't look at the disciples as being the only people who don't, who didn't, who act like they didn't know Jesus. All of y'all done shouted and thank God for Jesus in your midnight hours. And y'all gonna make me a liar this morning? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, we all have shouted. And yet, have we not acted like we didn't believe? <laughs> Amen. Come on, y'all. I mean, we, we can't point at anybody without having three fingers pointed back at us. <laughs> Amen. Jesus said, I'm it. And then Jesus says, and this, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to get out your way. Jesus said, you are the witnesses to these things. You are witnesses. That's what these appearance stories are about. That's why Jesus is asking for a piece of fish. Not because he's hungry, because he wants to show them, I am who I said I am. I'm eating in front of you. Touch me if you need to. But notice the difference with John is John said, touch my wounds because of these nails. Luke tells a different story. In this story, Jesus is not telling them to touch him to find nail wounds. Jesus is get asking them to touch them, touch him because he is human. And, and so another way of even looking at this appearance story and Jesus eating piece of fish and Jesus saying touch me is in Jesus's humanity as the son of man Jesus is in solidarity with humanity church y'all ever met a God like that <laughs> I mean we know all kind of gods that sit high and stay high <laughs> Jesus God is high, but came low in the person of his only begotten baby boy, Christ Jesus, who's sitting next to you in your pew right now. Jesus is right there with you, church. And, and, and the part that I didn't read is, is, I think it's verse 
50 that says you've been clothed on high. It says you have been clothed with power from on high. Y'all know that's a reference to the Holy Spirit. Amen. I mean, last week we said, Jesus said, breathe on me. The chief, I mean, we can talk about all kinds of stuff around the Holy Spirit, y'all. But one of the one of the main reason why God gives us this power is so that we can become like Jesus. I mean, we we preached about it for nine weeks in the fruit of the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is power that enables us to do what Jesus does. That we can at least us, that we can at least hope, dream, and achieve through our actions to each other, y'all. We can be like Jesus. Matter of fact, Jesus said it himself. You will do greater things than these. Oh, Lord. And I mean, every time when Elijah left and was carried up in the chariot that we preached about a couple of months ago, and Elisha was left, his spirit, the spirit of Elijah, was left to Elisha. Elisha did greater things than Elijah. Amen? When Moses was called up and left Joshua, the spirit of Moses, which is another way of saying the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, y'all, amen, was left with Joshua and didn't Joshua, it wasn't Moses, it was Joshua who led them into the promised land. You got this power and Jesus is telling us, use it. <laughs> Acts 1 and 8 says you shall you shall receive what power somebody when the Holy Spirit comes not power for you to stand up and talk about how good you are that you all that in a ball and, and, and what a bag of chips <laughs> although you are <laughs> You are. But it's power, church, so that we can tear down these dang walls and build some bridges and be used by God to do it. And so Jesus is the key to un understanding all of this church. If you don't interpret the Bible through the lens of Christ Jesus, you'll get confused. That's how we use the Bible to oppress women, to say women can't lead in the church, in the neighborhood, and at work. That's how we can use the Bible to be hateful to our gay and lesbian siblings in our community. We take three verses and hit people over the head with them instead of using the whole corpus of the Bible to interpret community church, to interpret love one another. That verse is not qualified that you love certain people. It says love one another, who? Everybody. Everybody, y'all. Everybody. That's why the church is lost, y'all. That's why our communities are lost, because we're not trying to be like Jesus. You got the power, use it, to tear down walls and build bridges. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. God is good. All the time. My Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more. I want more. 
your hands together, church. Is God good? And all the time, God is good. It's prayer time, church. For those in our midst who stand in the need of prayer, this is your moment.
Lord God, we want more of you, Lord God. So, Lord God, set that fire down in our souls, Lord God. A fire so strong that we can't control it or contain it, Lord God. A fire for you, Lord God. Let us be on fire for you. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord God. Yes. We thank you thank for you. all that you do for us, Lord yes. God. We thank you for dying on that cross for us, Lord God. We thank you for the resurrection, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for just being God Almighty. So we thank you that you came down on the earth and dealt with us, Lord God. You knew what we were, Lord. You shared our pain, Lord God. You shared our anguish, Lord God. You looked at every sin, Lord God, and you still forgave us that you died on that cross for us, Lord God. So, Lord God, we just thank you right now, Lord God. We just give you thanks, praise, and glory, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, continue to touch your country, Lord God, but you pray for your world, Lord God. The world that is going backwards, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So, Lord God, we just pray for peace overseas, Lord God, and all the world war-torn countries, Lord God. Give them peace, Lord God. Let there be a cease to this war, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you right now because we know that it's going to happen, Lord God. We know that you are going to touch your people, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for those on this side of the world, our own country, Lord God. Lord God, it's in a shambles as well, Lord God. So Lord God, just touch your people. Lord God, we ask that you touch their hearts transform their minds and conform their wills to that of you, Lord God. Let them walk closer to you, Lord God. Let them be like you, Lord God. Fill their hearts with your fruit of the Spirit, Lord God. Fill their hearts, Lord God, with your gift of the Spirit, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for this church, Lord God. We pray for this ministry, Lord God. Holy Spirit, fall on everybody in this church, Lord God. You fill us with your spirit, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, touch each and every one represented here. Touch their families, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for our pastor, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you continue to strengthen him, that you continue to let him preach your truth, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we lift up his wife, Tracy, which is also our administrator, Lord God, because without her, Lord God, where we she keeps everything running, everything afloat, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. She handles it all, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you touch our tech team, Lord God, because they would not make this possible. This could not be possible without uh, the tech team and their knowledge of the uh, virtual screen, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and getting the word out to others, Lord God, virtually, Lord God. So we thank them, Lord God. We pray for all the rest of our ministries, Lord God. Just touch them and continue to grow them in your word, Lord God. We know what they need, Lord God, so we ask that you touch each and every one of them, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for those that have lost loved ones, Lord God. Lord God, I ask you to touch my family and the loss of my sister-in-law, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, give us peace, Lord God. Lord God, we continue to ask you to lift up Pastor Val and the loss of her good friend for over 40 years, Lord God. Strengthen her and give her peace, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for our children, Lord God. This has been just heavy on my heart because we lost another black girl baby to gun violence, Lord God. So, Lord God, we just ask that you touch the children. And as I pray, I need you to call out your own children, Lord God. Young or old, Lord God, just call their names out loud, Lord God. So, Lord God, I pray for our children here. So, we pray for Nolan. We pray for Mason, Haiti, Lord God, my black girl children, Lord God. We pray we pray for the Power Club children, Aubrey, Demira, Deshauna, Chrissy, Nanette, Mackenzie, Amaya, Robin, Elena, Bella, Journey, Lord God. Touch them, Lord God. Lift them up, Lord God. We pray for our young men especially, Lord. And we ask that you wrap your loving arms of protection around them and keep them out of harm's way, Lord God. We pray for their mindset, Lord God. This mindset that they are indestructible, Lord God. That they can face anything violently. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Touch their minds right now, Lord God. We pray and 
come against in the name of Jesus anything that tries to attack their minds, Lord God. We take authority of all demonic oppression, Lord God. We take authority of all unrealistic fantasies, Lord God, about being the king of the world, Lord God, that they are not afraid to die, Lord God. Take all that away from them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. So we lift up our young men, Lord. We pray for Mikey and Mike and Paul, Antonio, Adonis, Amy and JJ, CJ, Demir, Zach, uh, Jaden, Blake, Lord God. Continue to touch our young men. Continue to equip them with the armor of God, Lord God. It's a battle out there for you. It's a battle in every corner. It's a battle in the streets, Lord God. It's a battle even in the schools, Lord God, which is supposed to be their protection, Lord God. So, Lord God, we just ask that you equip them with everything they need, Lord God. Fill them with your Holy Spirit power, Lord God. Fill them with your word, Lord God, so they will not go astray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Our children are sacred, Lord God. So, Lord God, we just ask that you protect them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We pray for our sick and shut in, Lord God. We continue to lift up prayers for Linda, for Brenda, for Lindsay, Lord God. You know what they need, Lord God. So we ask that you protect them, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, say amen. somebody into a relationship with God through Christ Jesus they are invited to God's table so let us bow our heads and close our eyes and open our hearts to the Lord let us pray gracious life giving God we thank you Lord for this table that you have given us Lord table that you have called us to ask all of your children to come and sit at this table. No matter who you are, white, black, red, yellow, no matter where you live, no matter how much money you have or how much you don't have, 
you are invited to God's table. We thank you, Lord, that it is at this table that we experience the body and the blood of our Savior and your Son, Christ Jesus, and that through the blood we are able to tear down walls and build bridges, that through the blood we are able to eliminate racism, classism, sexism, heterosexism, ableism, and all the walls that we use to divide ourselves. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb, the Savior of the world, Christ Jesus, who came to take away the sin of the world. Thank you, God, for the gift of your baby, Christ Jesus. We pray these in all mercies in the name of your Son, and our Savior, who can do everything but fail. His name is Jesus, and let the children of the living God say amen. Amen. Amen, church. We remember that on that incredible night, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This body is given to you. Again, after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he blessed it. And gave it to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as long as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection until our Lord comes again. Amen. And now, church, let us pray in the manner in which our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God are for the whole people of God. Amen. So church, I, everybody has a communion cup. I hope. Amen. Yes. Amen. All right. And so, repeat after me. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now receive this blessing. May the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus keep you and strengthen you in God's grace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Shine. 
it is giving time, church. So if we also use Jesus uh, as an example in terms of giving, we see that we again cannot lose <laughs> with Jesus as our example for everything that we would endeavor to do. Who gave more than Jesus? Nobody. <laughs> Jesus gave his life for the sake of the world, for the sake of humanity. So God has given us everything that we have. And God only asked us to give, what, 10%, y'all? 10% of the abundance from which God has given us. So we ask as God's church, because it is through faith in God and through the generosity of God's people that we are able to do what we do in this community of faith and that we are able to dream what we could do and what God can use us to do. The text that uh, Minister Bridget Freeman Horton read from the first John text said to us that what we are to become has not been revealed yet to us. And so one of the ways that we discover that is through the generosity of our giving. Amen. That through those resources, God has given us the ability to imagine what we can do on this corner. Uh, so you something that uh, the theologian, the homiletics preaching teacher, Frank Thomas calls a moral imagination. And so it's through your gifts that we are able to imagine. And so there are many ways for us to give, y'all. Um, and we, we're directing you, of course, every week we ask you to choose this Breeze app. And once you get into it, it's real easy. I mean, even for me, it was tough at first. Oh, Lord, but uh, it is easy. So we ask you that you use the Breeze app, but amen, if you're still struggling with that, uh, we also we also take Cash App and PayPal. Uh, and if you still write checks, oh man, we are still accepting checks, amen. So write those checks to uh, Love Rising Lutheran Church. If you're at home uh, on our virtual church, you can put it in an envelope and mail it to the address up there, which is 21230 Lost Road. That's in Detroit. Proud to be in the city of Detroit, Michigan, 48236. And we still have our community relief fund that we are still using by God's grace to bless folks who are in financial difficulty and so if you have any extra that you can put toward the CRF fund make sure that you earmark it CRF so we will direct it to the CRF fund amen amen, amen church and so now we have some announcements and our minister uh, Bridget Freeman Horton will come forward I need you, this is out of the ordinary, if you've been touched any kind of way through the word of God, through the song, through the praise, and I need y'all to give God the highest praise and shout Access code is 
All right, I need you all to check in with, what is it, Facebook, YouTube, subscribe and like and share. Please click and share. Hashtags for the day? Jesus is the key. Jesus is the keeper? And don't Jesus is the key. Don't just talk it. Don't just talk it. Walk it. I like that one. All right. Anything else? You just got two for us? Oh, you got the power. Amen. encourage us so yes. make sure that you do that also click and share if you something today spoke to you something today blessed you go online and tell somebody shall share that with somebody amen and so please stand if you're able this is where we are going to send you into the community been blessed today now it's your turn to bless somebody and bless somebody beyond this sanctuary go into the community and shout about how good God is amen and so turn to each other and repeat after me there is no mountain there is no mountain that God can't get you around. Exactly. There, is no there is no valley. That God can't get you over. Can't get you over. There, is no there is no storm. That God can't get you through. Can't get you, through. you have been blessed. You have been blessed. Now, go now go and be a blessing. Give up some love, some holy high fives. Dap somebody, give them a holy elbow, amen. <laughs> Go in peace, love, and serve the living God. We want to thank God for, our, for the voices of love rising and our minister of music, Reverend Dr. Valerie McKinley, and our tech team, amen and put our voice all over the world. See you next week. Have a blessed day. All right. Amen. Amen.